Hey everyone, Josh here with another Sony Vegas tutorial. This time I'm going to be showing you the best.mov render settings in Sony Vegas. So let's jump right in it. I recorded a clip on my Lumix G7 in 4K and dragged it into the timeline here. One thing I want to let you know is there's two different types of 4K. One's true 4K and the other one's QHD, which is also classified as 4K. Basically, some manufacturers started pumping out 4K at different resolutions and they just met in the middle and called them both 4K. So YouTube recognizes that the same way as well. So if you uploaded a video in QHD or true 4K, it's still gonna be the 4K option in the settings. So here's my clip. And if we go to File, Render As, make sure we uncheck these boxes. Then we wanna recheck Match Project Settings. That'll filter out all the options that are not 4K. Let's talk about Intel HEVC. Click on the first one, then click Customize. Keep everything as it is. Make sure your frame rate is the same as your source frame rate. So if you shot in 59 frames a second 4K, make sure you switch to that. If you shot in 23.9, make sure you keep it at that. Field order, keep it at none. You can't even change it. Keep everything the same. The only thing you got to worry about is these two things. If you want to do constant bitrate, then you want to keep it as close to the source bitrate that you recorded with as possible. So with my Lumix G7, I recorded this clip in 4K in 23.9 frames a second and the maximum bit rate it was using was 100 megabits a second. So going above that just makes no sense. It's adding to the file size for no reason. So with constant bit rate, I'm gonna keep it as close to that as possible. It doesn't let you cu put custom entries in here. So I can choose 135. It's gonna be a hair bit of a bigger file size than I wanted, but it's gonna keep my true quality if I'm using constant bit rate. If you use variable bit rate, you can fluctuate it and you may experience some pixelation here or there, but it's not going to be anything noticeable. But you want to make your maximum, whatever your maximum source footage bitrate was. So mine was, again, 100 megabits max. But I want my average to be, probably don't want to go under 80. So if I'm using variable bitrate, I'll get those settings, and that'll be good. Basically, the key is don't unnecessarily go over your bitrate unless you truly have to, because it's just going to add to your file size. Next, keep your sample hertz rate the same as your source footage, and then bitrate, keep that at 192 for the highest quality bitrate audio. Project, use project settings, always change that to best, and then there you go. Rename this, save it, and that's Intel's HEVC.MOV render. Now the two things you want to know about this render is, this uses the H.265 compression method, which everything else pretty much uses H.264, so it's a new age compression method that keeps your file size really low. So that's really good, especially if you're rendering in a long 4K video. It's going to be very low file size, but keep the quality. So it's a really good way to make a .mov. The only downside is that it takes forever to render. I think I rendered a 15 second video just to see, and it took almost a minute per second of the video. So it took almost 15 minutes to render a 15 second 4K video with this compression method. Granted, it was only like a 60 megabyte file size and it looked great, but it took forever. So unless you have a lot of time to kill, this is not your best rendering method. It's a great one, but it's not the best if you're on a time frame. So going to the best one, I think, is Magic's ProRes. Click ProRes 422 up here. Hit Customize Template. Here it gives you the option to do both those 4Ks I was talking about. 4K Ultra HD is 3840 by 2160, and then 4K true is 4096 by 2160. So you can see there's a difference in pixel size, but they're both still classified as 4K. Now the only thing you gotta change on here is the profile. So very simplified, ProRes 422 Proxy is the lowest quality you can render in, and ProRes 444XQ is the highest quality. To the naked eye, you're really not gonna see much of a difference between any of that. It's still going to render in beautiful 4K awesomeness. Magic's created this ProRes format specifically to render DSLR footage the best it possibly can. So if you're shooting short videos or vlogs in a DSLR like I am right here, then you're going to want to render in ProRes. Just a good rule of thumb is proxy lowest quality, XQ highest quality. The only thing is they're going to be huge file sizes once you're done. I just rendered Crayhen Vlog 6, and it's about a 9 minute video in 4K, and I used 422 regular, and the 9 minute video ended up being around 7 gigs, which is humongous, that's almost a gig a minute. But it looks good. So you really gotta pick your poison when choosing which way to render in 4K. 
So getting back to it, if you choose your profile, I'm going to choose roughly a medium quality. Field order, keep it nothing. You don't got to change anything else in here. Audio, keep it the same sample rate as your source footage. Project, change video rendering quality to best. And we're only doing this just in case your project settings don't already have it at best. And then name it anything you want. Save, hit OK, and bam. That's what you're going to render with. So choose whichever one of those you want. I'm rendering this video in this format that I'm showing you right now. So if you like the quality of that, I'll zoom in and show you the quality of my face right now because I'm recording in 4K right here. But these are the best .mov render settings in Sony Vegas. If this helped you out, like, subscribe, and share. It really helps me out, and I'll see you in the next tutorial.